Hello and welcome. I'm John Garlick and I'm here with Sheriff Matthew Wade and this is Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Sheriff, Happy hey, New Year. Happy New Year. It's hard to believe it's 2023, I but it is. Believe. I heard it's going to be an odd year. An odd year. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Speaking of odd, we have an even count. Yeah, that's right. Two arrests this week brings our count up to 5,152 people arrested all because somebody was willing to help us out. Thank you for helping us keep our community safe. And talking about community safety, you had a rough New Year's Eve. Yeah, New Year's Eve, I tell you what, uh, it got real foggy out in Ohatchee, and uh, we had a 17-car pileup. Oh my God! In uh, on Highway 144, around uh, in between Bowling Springs Road and Main Street in Ohatchee, uh, it was just super foggy, and somebody had a wreck, and then people just kept running into them. Actually, in Ohatchee, police officer's car got hit it, it, the same night. It was just, it's just a very um, uh, Dangerous situations. So. A lot of people hurt. A lot of people hurt. But nobody died. Nobody died. So. Thank God. But, you know, with bad weather coming up this week, and people just need to make sure that don't travel if you can help it. And if you do, at least slow way down. Well, there you go. So stay weather-wise and stay with us. We have the first half of our lineup and a really interesting guest for you here on Cavan County's Most Wanted. And welcome to the first half of our lineup. This half brought to you by For Him Bail Bonding for him bail bonding 256-848-7590 first up in our lineup this week zachary bast mr bast last known to be living in aniston he's wanted for failure to appear on theft of property second and take a look at shernardo elston mr elston last known to be living in aniston he's wanted on a probation violation for possession of a forged instrument third and this is Kathy Chandler. Miss Chandler, last known to be living in Aniston, she's wanted for failure to appear on possession of a controlled substance. And have a look at Cheryl Payne. Miss Payne, last known to be living in Woodland, she's wanted for failure to appear on theft of property first. This is David Hunt. Mr. Hunt, last known to be living in Alabaster, he's wanted on a probation violation for theft of property second. And take a look at Isaac Russell. Mr. Russell, the last known to be living in Aniston, wanted for failure to appear on receiving stolen property first. And this is Amy Andrews. Miss Andrews, last known to be living in Aniston. She's wanted on a probation violation for possession of a controlled substance. And meet Arthea Vaughn. Miss Vaughn, last known to be living in Aniston. She's wanted for failure to appear for possession of marijuana first. And that's it for the first half of the lineup. Stay tuned for the second half later in the show. Welcome back. We hope you saw somebody in that half of the lineup. You might know where they are. And if you do, call Sheriff Matthew Wade. You call. He hauls. We are here with Maggie Byrne Owens, President, CEO, Director, longtime veteran of the YMCA. Correct. So good to have you on the show. So everybody's New Year's resolution is always... <laughs> I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to do better, you know. Correct. We is, did. is that your resolution? No. <laughs> not mine either. Right? It's not mine, actually. I stopped doing that stuff. <laughs> hey, I, last March, I got serious. I've lost about 60 pounds, and but those kind of things, as classes and, and uh, exercise and fitness is important. Right, and we have a lot of classes at the YMCA. We start early morning with some of our cycle classes that we have, and then... Uh, progress through the morning and um, even have pickleball that we've got going on. In the <laughs> yes. And it, Do you have you, a pickleball team yet? <clears throat> I told my wife we were riding down the road. Uh, it might have been the second, and there were people playing pickleball at the Golden Springs uh, course. And I told I had to explain pickleball to my wife, and I told her, I said, we're going to be pickleballists at right. some point in our life. Well, they, they're playing in a lot of churches. We uh, brought it to the Y probably about, I want to say, four or five years ago. It may have been even longer. Um, but we've got two courts that we marked out on our uh, gym floor, and so they play Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. And actually, last week, when we had less classes going on because of um, instructors being on vacation, I think they played Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. They came in every day. And pickleball is huge. And, and you know, you need correct. a team. We're going to do a pickleball team at some point. Well, you yes. need to come come down and try it out at the Y. We we have extra paddles, and um, the folks there are always willing and bringing in, you know, willing to teach people. And we've had some clinics, and we've just got a wonderful group that comes in and plays. A lot of them are Y members, and we also have guests, outside people, that come in and pay a two dollar fee to pay uh, play, and they have a great time. So That's it's amazing. it's a great sport. It's just going great. 
guns. It's, it's, it's huge. Kip, it, it Kip is. Kip Chappell's a big pickleball I, guy. I, you I, I tell Kip? you, yes, I, Kip, I do. <laughs> and, you know, we were doing the election up in Piedmont, and they had election opponent places at the gym up in uh, Piedmont, and they were pickleball everywhere, and it's just it's fun to watch them. So. It's, it's amazing. It's, it's well, a great sport. Well, besides pickleball. <laughs> We have a lot of programs at the Y. We've got youth programs. Um, we kick off this Saturday with our uh, fall swim lessons. So we have them on Saturdays. In February, we'll start them on Tuesday, Thursday nights, and then Saturday, and have them every Saturday. We do, and of course, a lot of people don't realize we have our indoor pool, so we do year-round swim lessons. Right. So um, you know, just contact us at the Y, and uh, we'd love to get you involved in. You still have the teams, like the sharks and no, the minnows. No, we no, we the, no longer have have a swim team oh, okay. um, so um, we lost our coach a couple of years ago and we just it kind of died down so um, but there is a team that's out there in Calhoun County but it's not at, at our facility uh, we are focusing more on swim lessons and I will tell you since COVID hit we've had more adults come through and, t and that's been on their bucket list to learn how to swim and I want to say the last probably two and a half to three years we've probably had about 50 to 60 adults that have come through and have learned how to swim wow. where before if we had you know 25 adults in five years and I mean it's just been huge adults coming and learning how to swim and we've had families that have contacted us saying we want to do family swim lessons. Our IT guy at the sheriff's office Philip Smith I want to name him because he's terrified of water Get and, and if, I, water. if I'd have known this just a week or two ago I would have got him a gift certificate for Christmas to learn how to swim. So. You can still get him a, get him in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. And I'm get him in it. swim lessons and we do have a we've got some adults starting this Saturday we've got one adult that um, and it's a dad who's learned his daughter's taking swim lessons and he's taking so his goal is this summer that when they go to the beach that he can get in the ocean with his daughter. Everybody and, should know how to swim. And everybody should know how to swim. That's important. Yes, it's, it's, it's very important. And more importantly, to swim, you want to make sure you can float. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. And, and believe it, there's a lot of people who cannot float. But then we do teach them to float. And safety, it's all about learning how to Absolutely. be safe in water and be safe around water. And that is something that we do as well. And I'm actually even teaching swim lessons. I've We've been down instructors, so I've gotten back into it, and it's been a lot of fun for me when I've been out of it, you know, for 15 years of not teaching and getting back in the water. It's It's been a lot of fun. Do you have any scuba classes? No, we do not have you scuba. You need to get a scuba class. I learned how to scuba dive at the YNCA in my hometown when I was 14. <laughs> then they're out there and they, they do it. I know in Gadsden they have a program, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure where, but they do have some scuba classes that are out there. But we also have after school programs that we run um, during the school year that we're in eight schools, uh, six county school systems, and two Aniston City schools. So we are there from school dismissal till 6 p.m. every day for working parents that need. Um, uh, need us so um, and we are on site at the schools which is wonderful we don't transport so we're not in the transportation business so um, we stay on site at these schools so you can contact us to see if we have a program at your local school and um, we also have financial assistance that's available based on income we don't want any child not to be cared for or be at home alone so um, and their parents can't afford it they contact us we they fill out a scholarship application and we will scholarship them and give them some uh, reduced fees to keep you know put them in our program so that they won't be at home by themselves wow. we just want it's all about safety whether in the pool or at home you know we want kids we don't want them to be alone and we want parents to to keep working we don't want them to have to be at home so our you know, our goal and our mission is is to reach as many people as we can and to keep people working. Well, and getting kids together is really important. Social, yes. Generation Z, I just read some research, they spend more time on their phones. Correct. They're not interacting, which is why depression and anxiety is so high in this young generation. We need to encourage kids to get back when they're around other kids. They learn social skills. Absolutely. Right? You remember when you were a kid, you, you get bullied and you had to learn how to negotiate that. Right. right? <laughs> yeah. I, those are, you know, and uh, me and my wife was just discussing about our children being in daycare. Everybody's got their own beliefs and their own systems. I'm not knocking any of that, but daycare for our children did so much for them. They went when they were young. When they got into uh, kindergarten, they were they knew so much more. They had social skills. 
the interaction of being, we're meant to be around other people. Right. That's why, you know, we're meant to that. So that is so important. I agree. We, we have that, you know, as far as we don't allow the cell phones to be, we don't have, you know, cell phones or their toys brought from home because we've got plenty of activities. We go to the gym, we go outside to Zen Park, you know, City of Anderson put in this great equipment at Zen Park, playground equipment. We also, during the summertime when we have summer camps, we use their, um, their water park that's out oh, there, yeah. you know, so um, it's, it's a lot of fun. Well, we're going to take a break, and when we get back, we're going to talk about more of the Y programs. But stay with us for the second half of the lineup here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. And welcome to the second half of our lineup. This half brought to you by A1 Freedom Bail Bonding. A1 Freedom Bail Bonding, 256-236-7888. First up this half is Kasim Fox. Mr. Fox, last known to be living in Norfolk, Virginia. He's wanted for a probation violation for possession of a forged instrument second. And take a look at Harold Johnson. Mr. Johnson, last known to be living in East Aboga. He's wanted for failure to appear on possession of a controlled substance. And that's it for our lineup this week. If you have any information on these folks, give Crime Stoppers a call. That number 1-833-251-7867. Welcome back. We hope you saw somebody in that half of the lineup. You might know where they are. If you do, call the sheriff's office. Call Matthew Wade. You call, they haul. We are here with Maggie Byrne Owens, director, CEO, goddess of the YMCA. Hmm. I've been there 33 years, so it's been a long time. 30, I know, 33 years. We yes. were talking about kids were little. I remember. That's right. Your goodness. children are in our program. I see a, a lot of my parents that are with us now, they're bringing their kids. So it's. It's really great when you see things come full circle. I have the same thing, but mine's a little not as <laughs> celebratory. But I've seen people that, you know, 30 years ago that now their kids are following the same footsteps. So. Exactly. It's the thing. People, that's right. Sometimes the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, does but, it? But that, but that means it's a good point. If you're a good influence, you have good outcomes. That's so. right. And that's what we hope with what we engage in our community outreach that we do with all our programs. We talked a little bit a while ago about... After school, we do schools out fun days, like we've got kids right now at the Y um, that are there for working parents that we, they come in at seven in the morning and they're there till six at night. So um, we have activities during the day where we go, you know, outside to the park, to the gym, they do skills. We also, you know, do reading, even learning skills, even though they're out of school for the Christmas break, we're still doing skills with them to keep them, you know, their mind focused and engaged. And, um, then we have summer day camp programs. We'll start enrolling for summer day camp at the end of March when we, when we, you know, we'll have our spring break camp, and then parents will start, you know, getting kids enrolled for summer. And we have limited space in our five. We have five and six year olds at the YMCA, and seven to twelve year olds out at YMCA Camp Hamilton out on um, Jacksonville Highway. It's an eighty acre facility where we do all kinds of fun things out there. Still have a ropes course out there? We have a ropes course out there. So we're, um, we do that with the leadership of Calhoun County and, and, and you know, the um, youth of Calhoun County. And we do some activities with the kids, but not as much. Um, we can't do, you know, there's some things that we can't do with the kids. But we do have um, uh, biking out there, mo uh, mountain biking. We, we brought that in a couple of years ago. And we teach them how to ride mountain bikes. We have NICA instructors that come out and they teach the kids how to safely ride bikes. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's a neat program. We're very excited about that program. And you have the bikes out there just in case the kids don't have yep, bikes. Yeah, we, we provide everything. Oh, that's pretty cool. Helmets, bikes, everything. Well, that's, there used to be a bike drive to, to bring in bikes for kids to... The Kwanians give away bikes. That's where um, I saw that. Okay. Um, and we do that every year. So every um, in December we do one. Okay. Now let's talk about some of the adult programs. Okay. You've we got that really interesting one. Right. We do have some adult fitness programs, a um, lot of different classes, and we have a new program called Rock Steady Boxing, and that is for Parkinson patients. Um, you, you know, we do an assessment with the individuals and. Um, they come in and we do some testing with them and then we get them enrolled in the program and they meet twice a week for about um, an hour and a half to two hours. It's a, it's a pretty long class, but they use boxing equipment and we have certified instructors. These, um, these ladies that got instructed um, got certified. It took them, you know, I want to say several weeks to, 
to go through the process of, of learning everything and getting certified. And then, so we got, and right now we have about 12 patients, or 12 um, individuals that are in the program. So if somebody has <coughs> Parkinson's and they want to get into that program, um, how do they? How do they they need to contact the YMCA, and our number is 256 238 9622 or 238 YMCA. And they can contact me or Louise Lockridge, and we will call, you know, leave their name and phone number. We'll call them back and set up an appointment for an assessment to get them involved in the program. And, Sheriff, this is a unique program to Calhoun County. They're, you're like the only Y. In, in, in this area right yeah. now, um, Gadsden YMCA has have has had this program. I'm not sure if they're still doing it right now, but they were the first ones. We went over and uh, watched and saw how, how their program was going on, and then we wrote we got a grant to run this program because we had to buy all the equipment and that kind of stuff. There's a lot of equipment to go with that, so we were very fortunate with writing some grants and, and getting this program thanks to the community foundation here locally, oh, yeah. which helped us out. They help a lot of people. they help a lot of people. They do. So what other adult programs? Well, the fitness programs with the different classes. We have um, STT, which is called Strength Train Together. And through that class, they use in weights and barbells. And um, it's, fun, it's a really great class. And we have probably 20 to 25 people that are in that class. And you'll see, I mean, they're all over our gymnasium and spread out and using weights and, and dumbbells and, and just doing, you know, they every six weeks they do a new program. So um, MOSA, which is out of Atlanta, is who we are through this trademark through. And we're the only facility around that has this as well. It, you, they won't allow it anywhere else because we have it. Wow. So, which is kind of great. Some of these programs, you can't just go to any other facility to have this program. You have to come to the Y for it. And the YMCA is right in downtown Aniston. Downtown Aniston, 29 West 14th Street. And you've got the big swing pool. We got the pool. Big gym. We got the, the gym, the track. Like we, we talked about pickleball. That's another mm -hmm. adult program. But we do have youth that are now playing pickleball too. Uh, I think Friday night we probably had about 25 people and only eight people can play at a time and they've worked out a system where you know once you play a game and you move you know you move out let two people in or let four people on the court so they've got a, a great system how they let people in and out of and so everybody gets a chance to play. Well Maggie I want to thank you for for coming down and talking about the YMCA. Why don't you you got a website Facebook page? What, yes what, website what are Facebook page um, and I think it's YMCA Calhoun uh, Calcone, um, dot org, I believe, is our our web page, and then our, um, Facebook. Just look up the YMCA. Well, look them up in the phone book. <laughs> online. Uh, yeah, <laughs> go online. That's right. <laughs> programs for kids, and daycare, and camps, and adult programs. You got everything at the YMCA. So, we do. So let's take advantage of it. Thank you, Maggie. It Thank was you. Good to see you again, and we'll be looking for you shortly. Right after the, uh, what do we got? We got the Crime Stoppers coming up, and then we got a crazy criminal here on Cowan County's Most Wanted. And welcome to the Crime Stoppers part of our show where we ask you to help us on the following cases. On December 30th, a home in Chocolaca Road in Aniston was burglarized. They got away with Microsoft Xbox One. A white two door car, unknown make and model, was seen parked in front of the residence at the time of the theft. And on December 28th, between 7.15 and 8.15 in the evening at Waffle House in Alexandria, 2008, Gold Buick Lucerne was hit by an unknown person. The rear left tail light and fender was damaged in that accident. And on December 17th, the 2000 Gold Oldsmobile Alero broke down on the side of U.S. Highway 431 at Cane Creek Farm Road in Alexandria when the victim returned to move the vehicle on December 18th. It was gone. And that's it for our Crime Stoppers portion. If you have any information on these cases, please give Crime Stoppers a call. That number, 1-833-251-7867. Stupid! You're so stupid! Sheriff, it's crazy criminal time. So first of the new year. First of the new year. If we can get our picture up. Zima Johnson, 27. Um, did a job application for a uh, police agency in New Jersey sheriff's office and she had applied to be a security guard there and during the, sh the sheriff's office investigation they discovered that she had some warrants for fraud out of Pennsylvania so they asked her to come on down under the guise of a uh, job interview and when she got there they arrested her for that and she also had 10 
bench warrants for failure to appear. And on her person, she had two stolen credit cards. And so she was also charged with uh, credit card fraud uh, all at her job interview. So why she chose to apply to a sheriff's office uh, when she had all of these warrants and that she'd keep stolen credit cards on her person, uh, sounds like she got to be where she needed to be. So Zima Johnson, 27, was arrested back in October for that. Well, you know, she was probably feeling guilty and uh, felt like this was a way to redeem herself. So subconsciously, 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 she was she was feeling the guilt, and and you know we we, we deal with that in counseling, yes, yeah. latent guilt, and now she's probably unburdened and entering the new year. Hopefully, she's using her own credit cards. Using her own credit cards. Or she has them. Perhaps somebody else's. Maybe not. They said they could. As long as she keeps it in New Jersey and not in Calhoun County, Alabama, we're good. She, she said, well, they, they told me I could use them. Ah. Ah, ah. So, Sheriff, uh, people still looking for work? Can they come down to the Sheriff's Absolutely. Office? Absolutely. Always hiring. You can come uh, fill out the job application actually on our web page. And uh, we have an app. It's going to be some, you know, anytime you want to know anything about the Sheriff's Office to include weather alerts, you can download the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office app and you'll get that alert when there's bad weather or any other things that are going on. And you can also look at who's in jail, including their mugshot on our app. So go look it up and download that. Does that still have the sex offender tracking on it? It does. Too? It has the sex offender tracking. So the app's really good. A lot of people go on there and look to see who's been arrested and what their mugshot looks like and their charges and bond amount. Uh, real interested and could be real entertaining. So. Well, and you're looking for corrections officers, dispatch. We're looking deputies, for everything. everything. If you want a job, we're looking for corrections officers, dispatchers, and deputies. So if you ever thought law enforcement sounded interesting, please come see us. There you go. It's a great career, and you will enjoy working at the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office. And we will enjoy seeing you again uh, next week for our second show of the year here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted.